Yeah, so we were looking at um, you know the the whole dynamics of what to keep in mind uh, when you're ministering the word of God as a pastor. So we we see that we saw that it's it's quite different when you're just visiting the place. Right? Um, maybe it's a one-off thing, and maybe you know you're not going to be that frequently um, interacting with the audience. Uh, maybe maybe twice a year, or maybe once a year. You don't really know, or maybe just a one-off thing. But so so the whole thing differs. Um, where, you know, when you're ministering there Sunday after Sunday, or you know at least fifty-two um, you know, days in a year, uh, fifty because fifty-two weeks. So, um, so the whole thing uh, changes, right? So we looked at some of those uh, things that we can keep in mind when we are ministering uh, in such, uh, you know, in different contexts. When you are going there as a one-off minister, okay, what to do? What to do? Uh, well, it's you're not going to have a, um, you're not going to have another opportunity. So it's it's good not to start a series of messages, but to do a one-off message, but to uh, and also to you know uh, share a now word uh, of the Lord, right? A word in season uh, for that congregation. So it's good to do that. Okay. So today let's look at some of the um, you know. Uh, uh, what will actually contribute to authoritative speaking? Okay, uh, when we are saying authoritative speaking, it's, it, is, it is again speaking with confidence, but it goes beyond confidence. You know, it is to speak with spiritual authority, so which means that um, when we have um, understanding, okay, when we have a revelation uh, of the word. Um, and also an understanding, uh, an intellectual understanding as well. You know, I'm not ruling out that. When we understand with our minds, okay, uh, when we have the information about the Word of God, about a passage, about uh, you know why um, why it's there, and and some background information and all that. So that will really um, you know give rise to us speaking with authority. Okay, so one of the things that uh, contribute to uh, authoritative speaking is knowing the the context. Okay, so um, the, so as part of the structure of the message, knowing the context. Okay, so which means that uh, you know, okay, this is uh, the context in which this verse is uh, written. Okay, you you know. Okay, who's writing? You know who's writing to whom. Um, you know, especially uh, this verse. You know, um, let me just share that um, where Paul talks about um, uh, the fact that he can do all things. Okay, um, through Christ. Okay. So where we where do we see that? Um, in uh, Philippines, right? Uh, let's just turn to that scripture. Okay, so in Philippians chapter four, okay, Philippians chapter four and verse thirteen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, uh, Paul states, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay. So um, now this, this verse can be misquoted. This verse can uh, be misapplied um, you know, in various ways. But if you look at the context, you see that uh, verse 11, um, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So he's talking about going through difficult times. In his ministry, he's talking about persecution. He's not talking about okay being in a place where there is lack and uh, and not enough and so on. He's talking about all these varying situations, and he's he's saying you know I can do all these things. I can do all things. I can be in this place and I can come out. Uh, I can do all things through Christ. Uh, you know, so that's the context. Okay, so knowing the context um, is very very important for us, not only to rightly divide the word, but also gives us that spiritual authority um, with which to share, right? So 
one one thing is okay we will not misapply the word we will not uh, you know uh, we will not give a we will rightly divide the word we will not give a, a wrong interpretation but also that we will have the authority uh, to speak right spiritual authority so um we may not necessarily again we may not necessarily go into the let's say explanation of each and everything right um, but for us as preachers for us as proclaimers of the truth it's in it's important that we know the context okay um similarly there are, there are several places you know like uh, um where you see that um, uh, you know several verses taken out of context um resulting in error resulting in heresy and so on now in the preaching of that uh, of the word in the preaching of the text we may not touch upon that we may not touch upon that verse we may not um, even you know eliminate the truth of that to the audience to the congregation but for you as a speaker like you have biblical authority when you know the context like when you know the when you have the revelation uh, the context in which this was spoken and uh, so you have authority right so that's very important the other thing is also when it comes to the passage when it comes to the verses uh, when it comes to okay what what is the what is this book all about okay let's look at you know if you look at galatians you see that uh, okay this whole book there's a lot of rebuke there's a lot of uh, strong words and and so on um now you may not necessarily do a you know a book study on galatians you may be preaching on you know something else but it contributes it helps uh, in, in giving you that amount of authority with which to speak uh, because you have understanding of the way the text flows okay now, for example galatians you know, paul the whole you know if you look at the uh, the whole the birds eye view of that uh, of the epistle it's it's about it's about grace it's about not turning back to the law right it is it is about how salvation is um, by faith um, through faith in 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 god and it's by grace and through faith so the whole thing is about that not going back to the lord not uh, 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 you know how how did we receive the things it is by faith how did we receive salvation by faith how did we receive the works of the spirit by faith uh, the miracles and the supernatural things that happen in our midst how is it by faith so paul actually talks about you know you walk in the spirit you walk in faith uh, you walk as led by the spirit of god and uh, you stand fast in the liberty and all those things right uh, in the, those five chapters so um for us to know the way this whole passage flows or the outline of that book um that also gives uh, authority okay so it's important for us to uh, know that um well so we have you know we we can learn we can uh, maybe we're not at that place yet for all 66 books um well we can choose to say you know i think some of the things that we that we study you know like new testament survey or old testament survey actually gives us a perspective of that and even as we spend time studying uh, going through the text we 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 get an idea okay this is what it is about okay and uh, and it won't be like okay man i don't know the rest of the things but uh, this particular verse is what i know this is what i memorized and this is what i'm quoting but uh, you know the whole um the way the whole thing flows i i really don't know so we don't have to remain in that place okay we might be in that place but we don't have to remain there um we can learn we can study and uh, come to a place of um knowing and that gives us authority as well okay the, the third thing uh, that we're going to look at is um, when we are presenting um the the truth uh, when we are uh, we can actually uh also have an understanding of uh, the thesis and the antithesis see what do we mean by that um so we, for us to know uh, what is um uh, for us to know okay this is the thesis uh, this is the premise okay so let me just uh, share with you um what do we mean by a thesis by so it's actually a statement okay it is a it is a statement a premise okay let me just put it here um 
Let's see. Okay, in the chat, I just shared it. Um, let me read it out. A, a statement or theory that is put forward as a premise to be maintained or proved. Okay, so it's a statement and a theory. So this is the thesis, right? So um, you're just stating it. So what is the thesis? You know, like, just like how we saw uh, Galatians and, um, you know, so the thesis is that okay, salvation is by grace. It's not by works, salvation is by grace. Um, that is the thesis, right? So when you when you have the thesis and also when you know what the antithesis is, what is the antithesis? That salvation is by works. Okay, this thesis is um, salvation is by grace and grace alone, not by works. Right? The antithesis is the opposite of that. Okay, a statement which is opposing that. So antithesis is salvation is by is by works or when you look at galatians you see that uh, okay what is the suggestion that salvation is by grace and works okay, it's not enough to just believe in christ but you must be circumcised uh, it's not just uh, you know it, it's it's not just enough to be uh, having a faith in christ but it, you need to also keep these things of the law uh, and only then are you approved or accepted by God. Right? So this, that's an antithesis. Okay. So um, for us to uh, know that, for us to present that, uh, you know, for, for us to really formulate this thesis and antithesis will also give us greater authority. Right. So you. Um, you're sharing, okay, this is the thesis, this is the antithesis. And not, we don't have to be afraid of the antithesis. And so, because antithesis is a statement which is opposing what you're actually sharing and stating, right? Which is the opposite of that. Um, so, you don't have to shy away from knowing what it is. We don't have to shy away. But instead of that, we can actually see, okay, what does the scripture state? about the antithesis, right? Okay, then um, se several things like that, you know, even uh, John chapter 14 um, and verse six. So where uh, the Lord uh, describes himself and he says, okay, I'm the way, the truth and the life. Um, the, the antithesis would be, you know, the, the exclusiveness uh, of uh, the uniqueness of Christ uh, is a thesis. He says that, yeah, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Salvation, which means salvation is by no other person. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, the antithesis of that would be Jesus is one of the ways, right? He's one of the ways. And there are many other, other many ways. He's one of the ways. And uh, for us to really know from Scripture what uh, the biblical standpoint is about the antithesis. Like sometimes we have, we are very strong about you know, what the thesis is. Right? This is what scripture said. This is what he said. Therefore, it is so. But we also need to know what does scripture state about the antithesis. Right? So um, it's very important. Um, so those are some things which will really help us um, in in speaking authority. Okay, now let's let's look at one more uh, one more thing that would really help us. The fourth one is to develop a burden. Okay, now when we say burden, uh, it talks about a weight. It talks about uh, something in you know an internal weight that you carry. Okay, something that you are concerned about. Something that that is. Uh, well, it could be something that you're passionate about, but something that you're concerned about as well, right? It could be uh, towards uh, a particular problem that is there in society. It could be about uh, a certain group of people, right? You have a burden, um, you know, in, in evangelistic terms, it could be about a certain group of people coming to know Christ, where there is no widespread word where there is no work where they do not know the truth and uh, very little work is done among them so a uh, burden would be to uh, to share 
the gospel for them for the for that people group maybe it could be an ethnic group it could be something to do with their language for them to know christ you know there's a burden okay so when there is a burden you know several things happen when you have a burden and it's a god given burden it's not something you know that just you're just considering it's it's something um it's a god given burden your what happens is that you are emotionally invested or connected with it right so there is a difference you know when you speak about something without a burden for that and when you speak something with a burden like when you speak something yeah. where you are detached from that burden you know there's no well there's no weightage of that there's nothing that uh, that is just causing you to go to god about that um whereas if if there is something that is heavy on your heart you know that that you're praying to god for you are you're going to the lord for um then the way you communicate about that to the audience is different right it comes with tears maybe you know you move to tears it comes with a passion you know it comes with a righteous anger maybe you know you're animated and so it comes with a you know a, a passion a righteous passion right so to develop a burden now how do i do that how do i do that it comes through prayer and and it comes to asking the lord it comes through knowing what is the what is the problem right what is the situation what is the challenge so um so the whole you know you the way you the way you uh, talk about it the way you share about it everything changes um it's uh, it's like how um john stott says right john stott says so possess the truth that it possesses you so hold on to the truth so um it could be the it could be a truth of how the situation is it could be the truth of how people are it could be the truth of you know some statistic some social evil that is there and uh, you know so rampant and so you know you so expose that truth and what you know the reality is and the fact that people need the truth in order to change and it just takes a hold of you just completely take it takes a hold of you and it's, it's amazing like you write through you know history you see people who actually had a burden who went with the message and it was not they were just not taking a message they were they were the message themselves like the whole life was a message and they used words you know it's like that the whole life communicated the message and uh, yeah in and and like somebody says you know let your life be a sermon and and yes use words as well right so um that is something that um that we need to develop or we need to you know acquire and it comes from prayer it comes by asking god it comes by you know praying to pray spending time in prayer and asking the lord lord you know you uh, uh like what is it god if you're feeling very detached from the topic detached from the subject uh it's it uh, that means that a hey, don't leave it that way don't go speak to the congregation don't go speak to the audience uh that way maybe it was a topic that was given to you, you know it, it happens right somebody gives a topic and say can you speak on this can you share on this um well if if you're not really stirred up about it then it means that you really need to go to god's presence and ask lord for i i want to know what you think about this i want to have your heart lord for this for this truth god that needs to be communicated i want to know your heart i want to have your heart god. and uh, so uh, let let that truth get a grip of your heart even before you go, step and uh, you know address that right so uh, we need to do that um then of course uh, getting into the word of god uh, prayer is first and for second getting into the word of god you know, let the word let the truth of god's word about uh, about that particular topic about that particular need about that challenge let the truth of god's word you know flood your heart because otherwise what happens is like when we i don't know this i know i'm just going 
on a train journey. I was a young believer, new believer, uh, just going on a train journey. And then uh, I just saw these, uh, you know, slums as we were entering into a city. I saw these slums and all these huts and all these. And uh, I suddenly realized that hey, each hut is a, you know, it's a family there. There's people there. And uh, and the whole, whole, whole overwhelming uh, realization that they may not know Jesus. They, they may not be saved. Like this whole overwhelming realization. And uh, so I just felt overwhelmed. I felt depressed. Right. So this whole, whole feeling of overwhelm, uh, overwhelming feeling was, was right. But at the same time, when you're filled with the word, right, when you have God's heart, you, know, you have a pain for other people, but also the hope also the hope that God is doing something. It's not just you, right? It's not just you who's going there. It's the body of Christ. God has his people. God has others who are um, in the harvest, working in the harvest, who are doing. So it's not just about me. and you know. But at, but at that, you know, as a young new believer, I felt completely overwhelmed. I felt disillusioned. I felt, you know, how, how can this these people be saved? Because all the while I was looking at me, I was focusing on myself. Right? So the thing is, okay, you have the burden, you get the burden, um, and it is God given. But at the same time, you know, fill yourself with the Word of God. Be filled with the Word. Like, let there be a deposit of the Word, and the Word will actually God's Word is God's ideas, God's plans and purposes, and that will fill us with hope. And we will get an idea. We will, we will know that yes, there are others who are working. You know, I'm just looking at this particular example. So, so the thing is this: you know, it, uh, uh, to get a burden, it's it should not be, you know, something that actually uh, holds you back, but it should be something that actually drives you forward. Right? And that will happen only when we have both the reality of how things are and the reality of the kingdom, the, how the kingdom of God advances with power. And how the kingdom of God advances, continues to advance. There's nothing that can stop the kingdom of God, right? So, so that's um, that's developing a burden. And when we speak, when we proclaim with this burden. It is so different from when we speak without that burden, right? So, in, when you're having this burden, you may see speak a few lines. But it just comes across every line is like an arrow which finds its mark. But when you don't have that burden, it might be most eloquent, very articulate, and uh, might be very entertaining, but it's missing its mark. Right? Because there's, that weight is not there. Okay, So develop the burden. Uh, don't speak without being um, um, without being, don't speak in a manner that's detached from the truth. Okay, yeah. Okay. Then the other thing is the goal. Okay. Now, um, to have a goal, to have a clear uh, picture of, um, well, what is it? To help us would be like what we did earlier. Now, what is this message about? You know, to be able to write it uh, in a sentence or two. Which means there is clarity. Okay. Now, uh, for the non-Christian, what does this message mean? You know, for for the Christian, what does this message mean? Um, well, so it it gives us focus. It gives us. It sharpens our focus. It also sharpens our objective. Okay. This is what the message will do. Now, we cannot. You know, th there may be hundreds of things that we want to convey and. Uh, we may not be able to do all that right, in in one message in thirty minutes. We cannot. Right. So prayerfully, like ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you actually want me to convey within this time frame? Right. What is it? Because God knows the audience. God knows what the need is. God knows what needs to be conveyed, and He knows. So prayerfully consider what the objective is. Okay, so if we can write it down and say, okay, this is what it is, um, then it can be a, 
very focused, uh, uh, something that is, um, it finds its mark, something that you're able to communicate with clarity. Okay. So it, that also contributes to us speaking authoritatively, where you know that, okay, it's not about all this, but you know, this one thing or these three things that I'm going to be talking about. Okay, I'm just going to, uh, in the notes, I'm just, uh, you know, skipping a few things and uh, going down. Um, these are some things that we already uh, discussed earlier. So I'm just going to, you know, if you're in the notes, I'm going to step number seven, uh, which, I, which I think is in page 51 or 50, I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, is it 51? Um, yeah, uh, step number seven, which is methods of presentation. Okay, so these are different ways by which uh, different ways in which we can actually uh, craft that sermon. You know, craft the presentation. Um, so it's interesting, right? Depending on uh, you can we can choose you know, depending on the nature of audience, depending on the nature of uh, the content, um, the topic that we are actually sharing. So we can choose um, the different methods of presentation. So we're not talking about okay, uh, is it are we going to sing it? Are we going to you know uh, are we going to preach it? Are we going to narrate it? We're not talking about that. Okay? These are within the preaching itself. How can I? You know, uh, how can I craft it? How can I, uh, you know, uh, address it in a manner uh, which is best suited for the audience and best suited for the content? Okay. Okay. So, what are um, some um, methods? The first one is an argument. Okay. So, when you say an argument, it is um, it is what we studied now the thesis antithesis, what we just looked at earlier. You know? So something is for it, um, and you're making a statement uh, about it, saying that if you take that example of John 14 and verse 6, you say, Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. So that's, that's the argument that you're presenting. The antithesis of that would be, something that is opposite of that, something that would be all-inclusive rather than something that is unique right, about Jesus. So um, so we can actually uh, present it as an argument. So you represent, we present um, objections. Okay, so we, okay, we, we say, okay, Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. What could be the objections? Right? What could be the possible objections? Uh, why you know it could be about how can you say Jesus is unique you know when there are so many other ways well maybe the popular worldview is that there are many ways the 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 destination is the same right and we have like so many other uh, objections how can you say that this this only is the truth right um, so uh, what are those objections and uh, when you share from scripture um, to refute those objections right so that would be a, a method where we present arguments uh, about uh, something okay so um, well this is this will be there in almost every um, every every message you know that we might have this this an element of this is there always uh, but this whole message that we can f tailor it that way okay this is the statement what are some things that that are against it okay and then you share um the second one could be an admonition okay what is an admonition admonition is uh, is is a rebuke it's a it's a correction it's a it's a strong um rebuke right so um i just went in, uh so, so the whole message can be an admonition. It's a, it's a warning. It's a, it's a reprimand. Right. So the message is an admonition. Now, uh, admonition could be about uh, about holiness. Um, it could be about anything. You know, the what the scriptures. It could be about okay, having a burden to share. Uh, about missions, um, about um, about marriage and family. You know, it could be about any topic. 
um, but it comes as an admonition because God feels strongly about this. And in scripture, we see that there are admonitions. So we basically preach that and we see this is what God says, or this is the rebuke for people who, who lived in such a manner. Right? So it, it's an admonition. So uh, one thing to uh, keep in mind, now it's a, it's a very powerful thing. Right? It's a very powerful, it's very pointed, it's very direct. Right, So there's no mincing of words. This is what the truth is. This is what scripture says. Uh, but to keep in mind that it has to be presented with humility. Okay, Otherwise, we come across as someone who who's, knows it all, who does it all. And it is you people who actually need this message. Right? We come across in that manner. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm saying this, I'm the authority on this, I'm already doing it. And and we use this, you know, you need to do, you need to do this, you need to keep this. This is God, God is warning you now. God is uh, God is very displeased with you living in such a manner and um, and, and so on. So it we can it can be it can be sound it can be sounding very arrogant. Right. So it has to be with humility. It has to be knowing that okay, this truth applies to me as well. It's not just, you know, I'm the hearer. Right? I'm also the receiver of this truth. So it applies to me as well. I need to include myself. Right? And then it comes from a place of humility. Right. Secondly, it also has to come from a place of love and compassion. Right. That is what the cross is about. Right. The cross is a place of judgment. The cross is also a place of a place where compassion and grace is released and mercy is released, right? So, uh, you know, if you if you say the cross is a place of judgment in the sense, okay, if somebody doesn't receive Christ, somebody doesn't receive this truth that he carried one sin upon himself, and uh, he dealt with it, and uh, in the place of sin, just released forgiveness and salvation well if one doesn't receive that truth john chapter 3 is very clear okay um let's let's read that um it says that um, um he who believes in him john chapter 3 and verse 18 he who believes in him is not condemned but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. So he's talking about, okay, start John 3.16, we know, right? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right, so and it talks about the verses before that talks about how the Son of Man should be lifted up, just like Moses lifted the serpent in the desert, and how um, whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And then goes on to God so love the world. So, um, and comes this thing that comes this verse that he who does not believe is condemned. So, there is that place of judgment. That is the place of separation, and God is, you know, very clear. This is what it is, but it is also with compassion. It is also with huge amounts of love. It says God so loved the world, He doesn't want you to perish. He wants to. He wants you to save. Wants you to be saved. So the message of uh, admonition has to go out with truth, but it has to go out with compassion and grace. Otherwise, it will become very legalistic. It can sound arrogant. It can sound harsh. And well, it can uh, instead of drawing people to the truth, we are actually alienating people. We are saying, "I'm better than you." People go out, you know, go away uh, with that in mind. Okay, here's someone who's saying that I'm I'm no good, and they are better. I can never hope to reach. So it's just part of the truth. Right? We've exposed that person to one part of it and not the other part. So admonition has to be with humility. Admonition has to be with compassion. It has to provide a way out rather than saying, uh, only saying that this is wrong 
and uh, you know you have wronged and you are you are to be blamed rather than just stopping the message there it has to continue to say this is the way out this is what has been provided this is what you are invited for right it has to uh, it has to come you know, come uh, end in that manner so that makes the message wholesome right so admonition then it can also be uh, an indirect conviction okay so what's an indirect conviction well, it's, it's similar to what um, the conversation that nathan prophet nathan had with uh, with king david right? so he talked about uh, this, he narrated the story of the rich man. He narrated the story of the poor man, um, and who had the rich man had, you know, many flocks, but the poor man had just one little lamb. He was, and uh, the the rich man took away all that he had, and he killed it, and and so on. So it David was very indignant, very angry. He said, "How can this be?" This is injustice. He deserves punishment. And then Nathan said, the Prophet Nathan said, Okay, King, it is you. It is no, it's none other than you. This is what you did. So there was a lot of conviction. It was an indirect manner, uh, it's conviction. Okay. Um, so, uh, well, there could be a method. Maybe the message is, is that way. You know, maybe the message is about um, maybe about the church and how the church has become complacent and um, you know uh, how we are comfortable. Um, in fact, uh, there was one study which um, uh, which they did in the uh, uh, this is an old study, of course. Uh, I think it was in the eighties or the nineties. I'm not sure, but it was by the group Bana and. Uh, I forget the second name, but they did a study among the churches, among the believers, and they, they and they found out virtually there was no difference between the way um, unbelievers um, or nominal Christians um, spent their leisure. You know, the kind of programs they watched on TV, the places they went to, the kind of things they did, and who would call themselves born again believers, right? Um, the kind of entertainment, the kind of on leisure, the kind of things they did. So they found out there's something wrong. You know, if you're calling yourself a believer, if you're called to a consecrated life, you know, there's so much a world in the church. There's so much a world in the life of a believer that there's absolutely no no lines. You know, everybody's going in the way. So this was okay in the US, that particular church context, but you know, something like that. Right. So for such an audience, well, an indirect conviction would be to share the statistics. So this is what it is. So there's a conviction. Oh, hey, I belong to this group. You know, I, I, I can identify the fact that I'm a believer. But then, oh, if there is no difference, there's something wrong, right? There's something wrong. I need to make some choices. I need to make some decisions um, about the way I, uh, way about my entertainment, about my lifestyle. Well, if I believe. Then it has to show in the way I live, right? So uh, it can be an uh, indirect uh, conviction. Okay. Um, then the other thing would be uh, an exhortation or an appeal. Okay. So um, so this is um, basically an encouragement, um, and uh, it can be an appeal. Um, and normally, this is normally what happens when we conclude a message. It's an exhortation, it's an appeal, it's an encouragement. And also, uh, 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 when we say an appeal, it's an invitation. Right? It's, a, it's a request, a strong request. It's an urging to, to live for God. It's an urge to, to make a decision. Um, uh, if you're not a believer, to make a decision to live for Christ, if you're a believer, to make a decision on various things. So it could be an exhortation, an encouragement, okay, right through uh, with an appeal. Okay, so that is uh, one way by which uh, the message can be framed. Okay. And then another way is uh, what we would typically call as vision casting. Okay, so, you know, uh, to give the big picture 
of uh, of the end result to give the paint the big picture of or, or the vision so you're casting a vision you know you know, and this is typically a management term, right? Your vision casting, your your, and um, that would really enable the entire group to whom the vision is cast to move in that direction. Okay, so um, if you look at, um, let me just get that verse. Um, okay, I'll get the reference a little later. Um, um, okay, Habakkuk. Okay, uh, so Habakkuk. I will stand. Habakkuk chapter two. Okay, I will stand and I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me, and what I will answer when I am corrected. Okay, then verse two. Then the Lord answered me and said, "Write the vision, and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it." For, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Um, so here, you know, we just give a uh, kind of get an understanding, okay, what the vision can do. Okay, so when, uh, in the sense, when, when it is plain, when it is communicated in a simple manner, it says that, the Lord says, you know, make it plain, make it simple, uh, and and write it down. You know, that's what He says. Make it plain on tablets. Okay, so uh, you can recall. You have a reference. You can you know uh, refer to it. But what happens when the person who reads it, the person who sees it, he runs or he's moved to action. Okay, so the vision casting is this: like right? you are moved to action. You're talking about okay, this is the end goal this is what god wants for you um, this is what we are moving towards okay um so casting a vision about maybe in ministry maybe a team ministry team um it could be for um, for a church right for a church okay this is the vision why are we um doing what we are doing what does God want us to do? What direction does He want us to go? Maybe this year, you know, what are we going to emphasize on? What are we going to be focusing on? Okay, so that's vision casting. So you're you're giving the big picture and saying, this is what God has in store for us. Okay. So the ones who are able to connect with the vision, the ones who are engaging with the vision. What, what happens is that we are moved to act. Okay, so there's a movement, there's a momentum to move towards achieving or to move towards reaching that goal. Okay, so um, so this is something that we see. So it's a you know it's vision casting. Okay, so that the message can be that a vision casting. So it depends, right? If it's if you're talking to a church and then if you're talking to how a church can be. Uh, maybe there's some change that God wants. Maybe that God wants to, you know, the church to not focus on superficial things, but really spoke, uh, focus. Now the time has come to focus on some deep spiritual truths. Maybe the time has come for the church to move to maturity uh, and to do things differently. Right? So a casting of a vision is required. Now the casting of a vision is also is required for people to move to action, but also to get that oneness of heart and mind okay scripture talks about you know where the lord says my people perish for lack of uh, for lack of wisdom for lack of a vision where there is no vision people cast off restraint right so people live as they want but when there is a vision then there is focus then there is um, you know energy and resources and everything is, is brought together and there is movement okay, so there's no wastage of time there's no waste of resources we don't focus on unnecessary things right priorities are focused you're not saying you're not saying that okay let's not waste time putting our money putting our time putting our resources on you know, things that are you know superficial but 
this is what we know we know that god wants us to move in this direction so let's let's focus all our energies on it so we can actually reach that right so um when the vision is not there and people cast off restraint you no know, there are no boundaries there are and there's no focused action so uh, vision casting is very very important it's necessary uh, in the in the in the right setting right it's required and it can really bring in a big change uh, just like how we read in habakkuk that he may run who reads it right that would happen okay okay so we'll stop here there are two more things you know dilemma resolution and questions uh, which would uh, which should also help so we'll stop here and we are we are i just want to say that we are almost uh, nearing the end of uh, you know the our teaching session um and then maybe two more sessions and then we will we will start focusing on our presentation sermon presentation so um i will give more instructions on it and then you know uh, i hope you you know your topic you're preparing on it fine tuning it right so you can uh, start preparing on that as well okay uh, okay so thank you god bless see you thank you pastor and see you bye bye